Hello everyone. Today we will see problems uh, based on test of significance for large samples and in that uh, we look into test of significance of proportions. Okay. So we know that the normal distribution is a limiting form of binomial distribution when n is large. Okay. Here we take a sample uh, having n members. So if p is the probability of success of each member, therefore q will be the probability of failure and we know that p plus q is 1 correct with the mean np and standard deviation root npq okay here the mean proportion of success that we will take it as mean is equal to np by n because it's a mean proportion of success so uh, this is nothing but p same way standard deviation or standard error proportion of success is root of npq by n and then n will get cancelled and uh, as I told you the formula z is equal to x minus mu by sigma this we have learnt already. So x minus np by root of npq of course we can replace those values and uh, the main thing is if z is greater than 2.58 okay. So in that case the difference is highly significant because this 2.58 if, if you remember minus 2.58 to 2.58 if uh, that is a 99 percent of area will be covered under this value. So if it falls uh, within this value then in that case we will accept the hypothesis. If this value is above than 2.58 the difference is highly significant therefore we will reject the hypothesis. Yeah, Here if you see I have drawn the diagram so minus 2.58 to 2.58 so this is the area correct. So if it falls within this then in that case not a problem. If the calculated value, modulus value because we don't mind whether it's, it's on which side. So if this value is greater than 2.58 then the difference will be highly significant and will go to this area. If it goes to this area we will reject the hypothesis. Why modulus value means it can go to this area also then we will reject. Here also we will reject. So only inside the region the hypothesis can be accepted. So. Uh, we will see one problem. Uh, the result extract revealed that in a certain school over a period of 5 years, 725 students had passed and 615 students had failed. Test the hypothesis that here they have given the hypothesis. Okay, The success and failure are in equal proportions. So what is the hypothesis? They are saying that success and uh, failure are equal in proportion but we have a data correct with that data we have to check it okay whether it's going to be equal or not so of course in this problem it's very obvious but we have, we'll prove it okay so total number of students how many students are there that is 725 pass and 615 fail means in that case uh, the total number of students is 1340 okay so what is the observed success that is 725 is what observed but uh, what is the expected number of success because we want uh, success and failure should be equal in proportion. So total is 1340 and uh, probability of getting success that is 1 by 2. So 1340 by 2 we have written. So we got 670. So that is you, you are using this formula mu is equal to n into p. n is total value 1340 into p is 1 by 2. Why we are taking 1 by 2 because in the question success and failure are in equal proportions. So in that case p is also 1 by 2 and then q is 1 minus p that is again 1 by 2. So we are writing the formula z is equal to x minus mu by root of npq and uh, this mu we calculated that is uh, 1340 into 1 by 2 is 670 by n p is 1 by 2 again q is also 1 by 2 if you simplify you are getting this answer. This answer is greater than 2.58. So, this is going outside the region. Therefore, the hypothesis is rejected. So, what is our, what was our hypothesis given? Success and failure are in equal proportion. And I am rejecting the hypothesis based on this solution. Yeah. Now, we will see uh, another example. But before that, we just saw an example. By just substituting, directly substituting the values, we got it. And this is a mild deviation in that uh, subdivision. 
uh, if p is a probability of success of course we know root p q by n is a standard error the proportion of success what, what we will write p plus or minus 2.58 into root of p q by n this is proportion of success and we call it as a probable limit okay sometimes in the question they will ask the proportion uh, for example let us see this question in a sample of 500 men it was found that 60 percent of them had overweight what can we infer about the proportion of people having overweight in the population okay so um, probability of person having overweight what we will write favorable by total okay so because they have given 60 percent so we have written 60 by 100 this is a probability okay so it is uh, 0.6 therefore q is 1 minus p 0.4 so we got p we got q and uh, since they have asked the proportion we are using the formula probable limits is p, p plus or minus 2.58 into root of p q by n so we just substituted the values p 2.58 this is p this is q and n is total number 500 that sample number 500 men and uh, n is different okay sample size is n but uh, total number will come in uh, some other problem so don't get confused with capital n that is nothing but the population uh, in the example i gave you right from a particular college uh, we are taking a particular department so the overall college number of students that we call it as a population and particular department how many students we are selecting that we call it as n here the sample size is n 500 so n is 500 so after simplifying we are getting this value 0.5435 by using the one one value is plus 0.6 plus this thing the other value is 0.6 minus this thing so we are getting 0.5435 and uh, 0.6565 so thus the probable limits of people having overweight is we are converting it into percentage okay so 54.35 percentage to 65.65 percentage just we have applied the formula and p is nothing but the probability of success and q is the probability of failure here why we are taking this as p because that is what we are going we are talking about overweight correct so in the question also they have given overweight percentage and in the proportion also they are asking overweight so we are fixing p that is the person having overweight as p that is why we have taken 60 percent yeah let us solve uh, one more question a survey was conducted in a place of 2000 families by selecting a sample size 800 now can you see the difference what is n here n is 800 this is overall population 2000 is overall population so n is 800 because this is the sample size so it was revealed that 180 families were illiterates okay find the probable limits of illiterate families in the population of 2000 so now what is p the probability of success we are talking about illiterate family right 180 families were illiterate again in the question for probable limit they asked illiterate families so we are fixing p as the probability of illiterate families that is 180 by 800 because 800 is a sample size don't get confused with 2000 2000 is nothing but the overall population size that we will multiply at the end so simplifying we are getting this 0.225 if p is 0.225 q is 1 minus p that is 1 minus 0.225 is 0.775 so we got p we got q of course we are using the probable limits formula so p plus or minus 2.58 into root of p q by n i have written p q by q it's p q by n okay so 0.225 plus or minus 2.58 into root of p value is this q value is this n value is 800 and when we simplify with one plus value and one minus value we are getting 0 0.187 and 0 0.263 sorry it's not visible yeah 
so we are getting two values one with positive we are getting po one value as 0.187 and another value is 0.263 so uh, the probable limits of illiterate families in the population of 2000 so here in the sample of 800 this is the limit for the population of 2000 is we are multiplying this with 2000 0.187 into 2000 0.263 into 2000 and if you simplify this you will get 3742 526 are probably illiterate families so this is uh, one such example for probable limits uh, and you should be very careful with the overall population size and the sample size uh, let's see another example and this is slightly different I'll read the question to know the mean weight of all 10 year old boys in a city a sample of 225 was taken okay so the mean weight of the sample was found to be 67 pounds the moment we uh, uh, see the word mean weight so mean is nothing but x bar right with standard deviation of 12 pounds okay so what can we infer about the mean weight of the population so in that case again they are asking about what is the mean weight of the population in 95 percent as well as 99 percent so uh, x bar is 67 and n is 225 because sample size is 225 and sigma is 12 this is what given in the question so this formula is same as the previous one but uh, actually this is in terms of standard deviation okay so this is x bar plus or minus 1.96 into sigma by root n this is for 95 percent similarly x bar plus or minus 2.58 into sigma by root n how we got this formula uh, initially i told you right minus 1.96 to 1.96 when we write so minus 1.96 less than we will write the formula z is x minus mu by sigma less than 1.96 from that if we simplify we will arrive at this so x bar plus or minus 1.96 into sigma by root n and this is for 95 percent and 2.58 is for 99 percent so sigma by uh, root n is nothing but uh, 12 by n is 225 root n is 15 so 0.8 so just we have to substitute the value so for 95 percent confidence limit what we will do 60 x bar is 67 plus or minus 1.96 into this value we calculated right 0 0.8 so if you simplify this you will get uh, 64.432 and 68.568 so we can write the conclusion therefore for 95 percent confidence that mean weight of the population lies between 60 um 4.432 one sec there is a small mistake in the calculation yeah so that is this is 65.432 and 68.568 so similarly for 99 percent confidence limit 67 plus or minus 2.58 into the sigma by root n is 0.8 so when we simplify we are getting 64.936 and 69.064 so we can conclude that 99 percent confidence that the mean weight of the population lies between 64.936 and 69.064 this is same as that uh, z is equal to x minus mu by sigma but this is an an another uh, version since standard deviation is given so these are the types of problem uh, for the test of significance of mean we'll see more problems in the next video